what was really interesting too, I saw you've been collabing with uh, Jim Cummings, who's a phenomenal voice actor too. I want to shout him out. And uh, just, Oh, you know, sure. He's, yeah. he's, uh, he's unbelievable. And, uh, he, you know, he and guys like him always inspired me and they happen to be my friends. Um, when I'll tell you the truth, whenever I go to a gig and there's, you know, heavyweights in the room, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I gotta, I gotta really be on my toes today. You know, uh, I think the same tide raises all boats. You know, if you work with good people, you'll stay good. Yeah, for sure. And, I, and I'm sure you get to like pick each other's brains and understand like their process and how maybe you can take something from them. They, they, they could take something from you. And that's how a collaborative effort forms, I think, too. Yeah, the work speaks for itself, though. You, you know, you can take what you want from it, whether you're a, whether you're a fan or in the audience or if you're a collaborator or a co-worker. I take a lot from that. There's a mm -hmm. there's a, an immense energy working with other people. I mean, because during the pandemic, a lot of us had to work solo and they had yeah. to edit everything together. Um, but but working in concert with others is it's my favorite thing because of the energy. You know, everybody comes in the door ready to to work. And then if there's like any kind of breaks or pauses, you know, we immediately start talking about what's going on in the news and riffing on it and you know, it, it, it turns out it it turns into like Robin Williams and Jim Carrey, you know what I mean? Oh and then it's time to stop and go back to work. Yeah, well speaking of Robin Williams, who is like one of the greatest to ever do it, in anything he's done, drama, <clears throat> comedy, voiceover, everything. There's a funny thing I read speaking of Robin Williams was that Mrs. Doubtfire, they had about, I believe it was like an extra hour of unused footage because he just kept going off the rails and like improvising and doing all these oh, things sure. and plus he, they also have like an r-rated pg-13 and a g-rated style of film because that's how much he was able to give them so i think i think that's just hilarious how he can do yeah that. he was um he was just amazing um you know i i didn't grow up watching him i was the young guy and i was playing in bands and mm -hmm. um but there was somebody who inspired him. He idolized Jonathan Winters, and I was a Jonathan Winters uh, devotee. This guy was like, you know, he was the Robin Williams of his time. And then there was another guy um, named Sid Caesar who did dialects and, and, and characters, and, and it fractured me when I was a little kid. I mean, I saw that. That was the first televised image I ever saw was Sid Caesar on television. And my mom let me stay up to watch this show. And I took it all in, every bit of it, you know, the sketches, everything. And I was very young. I was about five. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I grew up, because my, because my dad showed me, I wasn't like around when they were in their prime, obviously, but like Rodney Dangerfield and Don Rickles. I guess those, the, the, for the older comics, that's who I know. Yes. Yes. But, yeah. Um, they were they were superlatives, you know. Did you ever see the movie uh, Midnight in Paris? You know, it sounds with, so familiar. Uh, who's who's in that movie? With, uh, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, the blonde actor. He's got kind of a weird nose. Let me see. Min. Oh, Owen. I was gonna say Owen Wilson. <laughs> yeah, Owen Wilson. Oh, it is him. Um, <laughs> Hey, yeah. it is Owen Wilson. I just searched it. Oh my god. He always movie. plays the part of a guy with a weird nose. Wow. <laughs> But but anyway, um, that movie, if you watch it, explains something that I was never able to put my finger on. And Woody Allen figured it out. He um, every night at midnight in this particular area on a street in Paris, this this old like old Rolls Royce sort of taxi or something would come down the street and they'd have the door open and Owen Wilson would get in and inside were like the heroes of their different generations. Yeah. And yeah, there was Louis Brunel and, um, you know, Francois Truffaut, not him. There was one guy before him, uh, Louis Mao. And okay. then there was uh, Ger Gertrude Stein and then there was Hemingway and, uh, you know, and, and you find out that, you know, every generation looks at the previous generation and go, why was everything so goddamn good? You know, how come everything just dissipated and all that beautiful stuff doesn't exist anymore because no one can do it? The thing is that you will be the idol of a 
of, of the following generation, all the stuff you did and all the stuff that happened in your time will be the new standard to them. Yeah, I always think it like that because I always, maybe I consider myself an old soul. You could probably tell by all the memorabilia stuff I have in my yes. studio room. But it's like, I always think, and I, I wasn't even around for the 80s or the 90s. I, I, I was born in 1999, but I always consider myself an old soul. I always think like back then it was, times were simpler, easier, happier, and yes. better. But it's kind of like what you said. I think down the road, let's say in the next 20 years, my kids will look back on when I grew up and said, oh, dad, you lived in the best era. Oh, wow. When you guys had They this, will say this, that. That's what it is. You're right. And I, I have to kind of have that more mentality. Otherwise, it's going to be just depressing if I just keep thinking like now it's not the best time. Well, well, the younger people coming up have the luxury of being able to watch YouTube and watch stuff that happens decades before them. Yeah. And um, and I and I'll go on like um, I'll you know, Beach Boys were heroes of mine, musical heroes. Love Brian Wilson. Oh, yeah. I love Beach Brian Boys. Wilson particularly was one of my idols. And, uh, you know, these young people go on YouTube and they look at these old um, videos of, with songs and the clips of the band and stuff. And the comments are always, how come we got gypped? Why isn't music like this anymore? How come there's no feeling anymore? It's just boom, 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 boom. And uh, they they feel like they got cheated. They and, do. Uh, in a way, they did because the state of music is really weird now. You know, it's different. Like I mean, there's yeah, there's some things that like I think having that that actually have gotten worse over time, right? Like movies, for example. I personally think. I think we're in a weird. I wouldn't say we're in a bad state. I just think we're in a weird state for movies right now. There's like a, like a two four the production company. I'm not sure if you know them, but like they're they make amazing independent movies, and I love all of them. Like mm -hmm. they're so unique and diverse. But then it's like you have some that are just. It feels like, in my opinion, we're just using the the same idea. That's like this, you know, part two, part three, part four of the same thing, and and it's kind of ruining that. My thing is. People think that let's say you have a good movie like let's say Rush Hour, right? I think they're making another Rush Hour, right? Rush Hour, you, all three were good, but the first is always gonna be the best in my opinion. It's like that was something so special, and, and I feel like they're trying to they keep trying to get that same magic with yes. doing the sequels, but they're not gonna do that. So they have to kind of think well, they have to think outside the box more. That's 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 the ultimate lesson of anybody that has to try and do anything in Hollywood is that the minute they find a formula. You know, they think everything's a formula that they can just co-opt. You know, they see the success of something else and they go, now we're going to do our version of it. And and then if it was a success, they do a second version of it and a third and they just keep going until people are like, OK, already enough, you know. Mm -hmm.